Hi everyone and welcome to today's Live Wilds class. My name is Adrian and I am streaming to you live from beautiful Budapest, Hungary. Hi Kyber, hi Mukesh, good to see students joining in. Today we're doing IELTS listening, some practice for band nine. Materials are coming from our websites uh, for general IELTS. Please visit us at gieltshelp.com. That's generalieltshelp.com. We'll use that website for the audio today. And for academic IELTS, check us out at aehelp.com. Uh, where we have lots of materials for you, practice exams, videos, interactive courses, tests, writing, speaking interview opportunities. I'm doing great, Kyber. Thank you for asking. Hi, Kareem. Hi, Roja from Nepal. I hope everything is great there. It's getting much later than here, I'm sure. All right, everyone. So um, let's get going right away. Waste not, want not. Uh, let's make good use of our time today, this beautiful Saturday. I'm going to uh, play the audio and show you the questions for listening section one. Everybody please have a pencil, piece of paper, a pen ready and we'll do the listening, okay? Uh, please students do not write your answers into the chat during the audio, just write it down on the paper, okay? Uh, practice it just like the outs, writing on paper, and then we'll talk about it after. So we'll do uh, listening from our test number four, section one, right away. All right. Kyber, I already answered your email, I'm quite sure, uh, either this morning or yesterday, so have a look. All right, students. Uh, this is our general IELTS website here. Click that big red button to join and get all of our great materials. When you do, you'll have a My Student account. Click that to log in and then you have a tour and you have our, your audio here. So today we're looking at this listening. This is a dark version for these live classes. This is test four, so it's CD4 track one for those students who have it. Okay, so here we go. Everybody's ready. Uh, students, I'm playing the audio through a nice Bose speaker and using this uh, uh, headset mic here for you. So it's decent quality, but if it's quiet, just turn up your volume or try to use a headset. And again, don't write your answers, please, into the chat. Give everybody a fair chance, okay, to answer on their own. We'll go over the answers at the end together anyway. So... Here we go, this is CD4, track one, everybody's ready, and three, two, one. This recording is copyrighted by Two Think One Solutions, Inc. and World ESL Tutors. You will hear several different recordings, and you will answer questions on what you hear. There will be time given to read the instructions and questions, and you will be given a chance to check your work. The recordings will be played only once. The test is made up of four sections. At the end of the test, you will have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet. Now turn to section one. Listening section one. You will hear a conversation between a student and a university administrator. First, you have some time to look at questions one to five. You will see that there is an example. This time only, the conversation relating to this question will be played. Oh, hi there. Is this the university registrar's office? Yes, it is. I'm Deborah Reed, the university's assistant registrar. What can I help you with today? Great. Thank you for seeing me today, Ms. Reed. I have a few concerns about my registration for the upcoming semester. 
The student says she has concerns about registration, so B has been indicated for you. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to five. Oh, hi there. Is this the University Registrar's Office? Yes, it is. I'm Deborah Reed, the University's Assistant Registrar. What can I help you with today? Great. Thank you for seeing me today, Ms. Reed. I have a few concerns about my registration for the upcoming semester. Certainly. What can I help you with? Sorry, what was your name again, Ms? Anderson. Melanie Anderson. And, well, my first question concerns my student record. I'm beginning my second year of uni, but my first didn't go so well. You're worried about your marks then, Ms. Anderson, and how they impact your registration status. Exactly. I don't know my precise average, but it is not good. Could you look into this for me? Absolutely. Could you please spell your last name for me? I've seen it spelt with either an E or an O in the final syllable. It's an E. A-N-D-E-R-S-E-N. -E -E my family ancestry is Swedish. Right then. And the next piece of information I need is your student registration number. Okay, um, oh, it seems I've left my student identification with my registration number on it in the car. Can I give you some other piece of information or identification? Yes, you can. Along with your surname, I can find your account with your date of birth. Great. It's the 20th of August, 1997. The 20th of August, 1997? Yes, that's right. All right. Let's see your account then. Okay, here it is. Well, I see what you mean about your marks. These are certainly not ideal. However, your average is above the level necessary to proceed to year two of your programme. However, I do see there's a hold on your account which is preventing you from registering for classes. Yes. See, I thought that was because of my marks. No, it's not. It's actually because you have unpaid library fines. Library fines? Yes. During the past year, you must have been tardy in returning some items to the university library. Yes, I think I was. Hardly seems like a good reason to prevent a student from registering, though. I know how you feel, but books are expensive for the university library to acquire, and we must coerce students to pay fines one way or another. How much do I owe? Six pounds twenty. Six pounds twenty? Well, I suppose it's a relief the total is so small. You now have some time to look at questions six to ten. Now listen to the rest of the interview and answer questions 6 to 10. Well, now that that is out of the way, I did have another concern. I need advice on what modules to take in my first semester. I'm in the BA Art History program, but as you can see from my record, I failed a class which is a prerequisite for two modules I'm supposed to take this semester. Yes, it looks like that's right. It was Art History 1270 that you failed. Is that right? 1270. Yes, I took it with Professor Calder. I found his teaching style did not match my learning style. Right. Well, that art history class is indeed a prerequisite for both art history 2170 and 2260. Yes, unfortunately, that's what I found out earlier. Is there anything that can be done? Well, Miss Anderson, I think there is. Here's what we'll do. We'll register you in the module you failed last year, and then we'll put you in art history 2240, which counts towards your degree in place of 2260. 2240 has no prerequisite, however. But what about the 2170 class? Yes, well, that's where we'll have to be creative. Are you comfortable taking an extra class in the spring semester? Yes, I think so. Good. We will register you in 1270 and 2240 in the fall, and then register you in 2170 in the spring. Great. And one final question. Is Professor Calder teaching Art History 1270 again this autumn? Yes, he is. But I've put you in Professor Hennessy's section instead. I think you'll be more successful.
That is the end of section one. You will now have half a minute to check your answers. All right, students, and always use that half minute to check your answers and make sure you didn't make any silly mistakes or miss some easy marks. All right. So, uh, just a quick point before we go over the answers, okay? Um, you probably realize, students, that in the beginning I was flipping around when the instructions were going on. That's actually a strategy. So there's no hard rule that you cannot look at the other sections in the listening uh, while the instructions are going on. It says, follow the instructions, turn to section one, but it doesn't say don't turn to section two or don't turn to section three, okay? So uh, in the 90 second um, uh, information time at the beginning, turn to section two, three, and four to look at the topic of those sections, okay? This will help you understand and do better when you get to those parts, okay? That's a good strategy to follow. Uh, sometimes students say, oh, my examiner didn't let me do that. He said, please don't turn the page. Uh, but that's uh, usually not the case. Most students say, yeah, I did that and it worked for me. Uh, so this is a really good strategy uh, to keep in mind, all right? So in the 90 second information uh, time, look at those sections. Did anybody re uh, catch or remember what section two, three, four are about? Anybody catch that while I was looking or were you just kind of spacing out? So yeah, uh, Onisim, that's right. You ha kind of have to preview, especially section three and four, because uh, section three and four are more difficult. Um, anybody catch uh, what section two or three or four were actually about? Uh, Abhishek says, fourth section was about turtles. Uh, yes, that's right. It was about the loggerhead turtle, but good for you for catching that. Yeah. So fourth was the loggerhead turtle. So it's a special kind of uh, turtle. Right? Anybody catch uh, section three? Onisim says, something about tables. Yeah, no, there was... Uh, there was a diagram in there. We'll talk about that later. But uh, there was a diagram in section two, Onisim. A lot of students are curious on how to answer that. Okay. Sure. Uh, all right. Well, one student caught turtles. Uh, again, uh, when you're doing the official aisles, just be really focused, okay? Try to catch as many as you can. Uh, third section, let's give you a little bit of foresight for that. Third section was about um, zoos. The second one was resort. Okay. So this is what you need to catch at least, okay? You have to at least in that one minute, you don't need two minutes uh, to um, uh, review section one. And the danger of the review time, this is very important students, so there is, uh, it's almost two minutes, the beginning of the IELTS listening. And there's actually a very kind of dangerous situation there for many students because in that one or two minutes where it says, uh, this is the listening portion of the Cambridge IELTS. These materials are copyrighted by the Cambridge ESL Examination Board. So it goes on like this. You probably heard this often uh, during your studies, especially if you're using Cambridge books. And it's very, very easy for students uh, in the real exam during the uh, introduction and information time to zone out, space out, 
everybody knows what the meaning of zone out or space out is. It's like, like this, let me. And then suddenly they're like, now we will begin section one. And you're like, whoa, whoa, okay, I'm in an exam. I have to get going here. So don't zone out. Don't start thinking about I'm stressed or what I'm going to have for lunch or uh, other thoughts. Just stay focused. And that's why it's good to try to look at section two, three, and four and get an idea of what those are about. Okay, so stay focused. Uh, do not zone out. So even if you don't have a chance to look at section three, uh, two, three, and four, do not zone out during the introduction uh, recording, okay? It's really important. I've, see, I, I've actually seen students do that, uh, so, uh, so just be very careful not to do that, okay? Zone out also, another way to say it is daydream, okay? All right, uh, let's answer these questions, students. So uh, look at your paper, look at what you wrote down, and let's answer them. Uh, number one, in which year of university is the student enrolled? So which year of university is the student enrolled? First, second, or third? Okay, you're all saying the answer is B. B it is, you're correct. In the official IELTS for that space, space one, okay? Write the capital B, all right? It's very clear, so use the capital letter, especially when you see it in the question like that. So B is good. Uh, what is the student concerned about most? So what's the biggest worry for this student? There's quite a bit of repetition in part one. Uh, the... Uh, they repeat the ideas, both speakers say it. So what is the student concerned about? Rekha says her marks. Onisim says her marks. Uh, careful when you see um, this here, okay? Most concerned about. Sometimes when it looks too easy, it is. Uh, she is not concerned most about her marks. Uh, she is, for those of you, Abhishek, you're correct. Um, she is most concerned about her registration status. So it's again B, okay? She's worried that she cannot register for her second year of university classes. She's worried about her status. She's worried about her marks, but she's most worried about her registration status, okay? Uh, she's afraid that she can't register for her classes because her marks are too low. So it's a little bit tricky. Pay attention to these qualifying words like most. Okay, uh, here's a short uh, form completion, very typical for uh, section one listening in IELTS. Uh, usually numbers, names, street addresses, spelling, dates, birthdays. Uh, number three, her name is Melanie. She spells it. Uh, what is her name? She spells it and she even emphasizes it's with an E. Right? Abhishek says her name is Anderson, spelt with an E. Mm -hmm. Nair, be careful. That's what she emphasized. So you can write capital, but she emphasized that the last vowel is an E. So it's Anderson with an E. Okay, has to be correct. Uh, they will not accept a different spelling of the name because she very clearly says it's Anderson, spelt with an E. You can write all capital letters, um, okay? You can also write it like a couple of you did, where you can go like this. All right, that is also correct. Uh, but you cannot write it like this. So even if you spell it correctly, if you have a small a, this is wrong. Names are proper nouns. In IELTS, that matters. In your reading, listening, and writing, it matters that you know which letters to capitalize, okay? Uh, you can write all capitals for the listening and the reading section for your answers, but don't write all capitals for your writing. It takes up a lot of space, it's difficult to read, so for writing, don't do that, but it's okay for listening and reading. So Anderson, <clears throat> when, when is she born? 
When was she born? She tells the date very, very clearly. It's a very simple way to do this. Uh, yes, uh, I'm going to go with the majority opinion. I seem to remember 20th of August as well. Okay, uh, the easiest way, just the number 20 and AUG. You can also go AUG 20, so AUG 20. That's okay as well. Uh, I don't recommend the superscript TH. You don't need that. Uh, if you make a mistake, like you write that or you write that, that will be wrong. All right? So it's better just to avoid that possible mistake by accident and just write the number. Okay? So AUG20 is fine. Uh, library fines. <laughs> How much does Ms. Anderson owe the university library so that she can register for her classes? Okay, Onisim says 620 pounds. Now, Onisim, careful. They will mark you wrong if you write the word pounds uh, because you already have the symbol pounds. So when you see the symbol, do not write the word. It's just simply 620, okay? Uh, you do not need and you should not write pounds, okay? Kyber, Nair, same thing. Don't repeat the symbol. It's given to you. All right. Let's keep rocking and rolling moving forward. So some good answers there. Uh, here we go. Write no more than three words for each answer. Uh, what program is the student enrolled in or what, sh what program is she in? Hi, Eugene. Thank you for those warming emojis as always. The wave hand panda smiley cat. Um, Rekha Rawat says art history. Onisim says BI art history. Uh, Abhishek says art history. Of those three, only Abhishek has one that will get one right. Uh, Rekha history, the H has to be capital. They're both proper nouns because it's the name of the program. This is where writing all capitals is the safe way. Onisim, it's not BI art history, it's BA, Bachelor of Arts in Art History but you don't actually need that in this case. Prashil Balusu, that's correct as well. BA, art history. Kyber, BA history uh, is not correct because that's a different program. You need the word art history. It's the history of art, okay? So uh, BA is optional, art history. Okay, that is correct. This has to be a capital also. Uh, just like uh, if we say Frank Street, okay, the S should be capital because it's part of the name. So um, if we say uh, Blue River, the R has to be capital because that's also part of the name of the river. Okay, so keep that in mind that when the common noun is part of the name, it becomes a proper noun and is capitalized. All right, keep that in mind. Uh, again, if you're using all capitals, you can avoid that danger, but keep it in mind in your task two and your task one writing, okay? That important piece of information. Uh, match the class uh, number with the correct description, seven, eight, nine. Make sure you have the correct numbers in your answer sheet. So 2170, what's the answer for that one? So seven is A, B, or C. Which one is it? Hi, AG. Good evening to you as well. Abhishek says that's B will be taken in the spring. Let's see if uh, people agree with that. Prashil says B. Rekha says it's B, A, C. So, yeah, this is B. Number eight, you're right, Rekha, it is A. And number nine is C. They talk about another class, I think it's 2240, but they do not talk about class 2260. So B, A, C, these have to be in the correct numbers uh, in your answer sheet as well, okay? All right, so B, A, C, seven is B, eight is A, nine is C, good. All right, 
So uh, let's keep going a little bit. One more question here for section one. Choose the correct letter, A or B. The student is registered for 1270 with the same professor as she previously had. This is a true-false. It's a simple one. Is it true or is it false? Okay, Prashil, Abhishek, you're right. It's false. Okay. Uh, you should get this uh, from the inference, from the overall uh, audio. So the student says, I failed 1270 because uh, the teacher's teaching style did not match my learning style. And the administrator says, no problem. I, I put you in a different professor's class. I put you in Professor Hennessy's class. So it's a different professor. So the student is not with the same professor the, uh, as she, she previously had. She will have a different professor uh, for the class. Okay, So B was the correct answer there. Now, uh, what did you get, students, for this part one? So how many did you get correct? What were your scores? Add them up. What kind of scores did you get? And some of you right now are probably thinking, wow, Adrian, that was pretty easy. I, got, I did a pretty good job. Hubby Jesswell says, hey, I got nine out of ten. And that is, that's good. Okay. Rekha says, I got eight. All right. Onisim says, I got a really bad score. Um, Prashil says, I got 10 out of 10. Fantastic. Uh, keep in mind that uh, listening part one is the easiest by far. Okay. So keep in mind that listening section one is the easiest. And you should get 8 to 10 correct from 10, okay? Uh, that's very important if you need to get a band 7 especially, all right? Uh, if you can't get 8 out of 10 correct and you keep losing marks in two, section 2, section 3, and 4 that are more and more difficult, then your score will continue to decrease. So you have to get a great score in that first part. Okay, students. We'll do a little bit more listening here in just a moment. Uh, let's have a look at section two. Okay, so section two, uh, this is some kind of a tour guide or some kind of a tour, sorry. Uh, we get that from number 11. So number 11 says approximately how long will the tour be? Uh, right away from this uh, part here, you go, aha, light bulb. All right, should go off in your head and uh, your brain is glowing and okay, this is about a tour given by a tour guide. You should get that just by uh, reading that first sentence, okay? And then the next one here, what are the four features of the resort? You're looking for these nouns when you're reviewing, okay? I'm teaching you a little bit of strategy for review, all right? So what are the four features of the resort? Okay, and then here there are some choices. It's a kind of like a complex multiple choice. It's worth three points. Uh, you probably can't see that. Uh, it's worth three points. It's questions 12 to 15. So you know, okay, this is a tour about a resort. So you start to visualize that. Okay, so you start to see, this is an eyeball, by the way, if <laughs> you can't get that. Uh, so you start to see that you're talking about a resort here and you visualize it. So you see a resort, a beach, some swimming pools, restaurants, dance center, yoga class. So uh, different amenities that you find at a resort, some rooms and so on. So you have to try to think about all of these different elements so that your brain can understand and answer quickly. All right, great. So you should get that from your review time, okay? When, we, when I play the audio, when you do the listening, visualize, try to see the information, try to picture what you're listening to. It's a very, very powerful way to predict what you hear and predict the answers, 
as well, okay? So IELTS is 50% paying attention and 50% using your critical, analytic, logical thinking to get high band scores, all right? So pay attention. Okay. So then we keep going. And in your review time, you notice that there are these... Uh, Diagrams, and I believe it was Kyber you asked me to uh, do a little bit on these diagrams and drawings for the listening section. Sometimes you have to label them, sometimes there's multiple questions on these. So it's good to practice them. Uh, these questions, they also hint, they also uh, suggest that you need to visualize. I know I'm dark right now, but that's just because I want you to see these diagrams clearly. It's a white uh, backlit, so it's bright. So here, when you're practicing at home, you need to uh, really pay attention to what kinds of words. When you're dealing with diagrams, what kind of words do you really have to pay attention to? So let's talk a little bit about diagrams and listening. And reading. These questions should remind you to visualize information that you are going to hear. Okay. Also, very importantly, you need to pay attention to uh, what kinds of words. No problem, Kyber. It will be up on the internet later. So what kind of words do you need to pay attention to with diagrams? Okay, so Rekha says sides is left, right, and directions. So yeah, directions and prepositions, okay? So beside, in front, behind, ahead, on the left, on the right, okay, up, down, there's lots, okay? Now, when you're practicing this at home, you should, before you listen for practice at home, write down some sentences, okay? So for practice at home, Write down sentences and make comparisons between diagrams when possible. Okay, let's see an example of that. Here we go. So, here we have two diagrams so far. Okay, we have diagram A and diagram B. What is the difference, students, between diagram A and diagram B? What's the difference? Okay, so you're looking at A, you're looking at B. A has a cafe, a couple of beach bars, and an entrance. B also has a cafe, a beach bar, a couple of beach bars, and an entrance. So what's the difference? And Abhishek, cafe location, yeah, that's, I mean, it's not cafe location because cafe location is the same. Uh, it's something else. So Abhishek says, yeah, it's the beach bar location. So what is it though? Where is, so here in the first one, where are the beach bars located? Okay. And this is good writing practice, by the way, for a lot of you as well. Left and right of what? So Abhishek says it's their left and right. They're on the left and the right. Left and right of what? So the beach bar is where? Left and right of the room. We don't know if this is a room. There's nothing telling us that this is 
the room. If anything, if I had to guess, I would say this is the beach because it's a beach bar. Okay, so I wouldn't say room. That's not in the diagram, Onisim. Abhishek says it's left and right of the entrance. Uh, the cafe is also left of the entrance, but the difference is, is that the beach bar is directly left of the entrance. Okay, so what I would say, and then this is what you're going for, is the two beach bars are located directly left and right of the entrance. Okay. However, In diagram B, so finish this sentence for me, students. Finish this sentence, however, in diagram B, okay? So what's the difference in diagram B? Mukesh says it's above the entrance. Uh, no, Mukesh, because above the entrance means the beach bar would be above your head. So in English, we wouldn't say that it's above the entrance because that means that people are drinking above your head uh, as you walk in. It's possible, but we don't have a 3D picture. Uh, Abhishek says that it's beside the cafe. Uh, yes, but where is it relative to the entrance? So this one is directly to the right, and this one is directly where? I still don't see the correct answer. It's opposite to the uh, entrance. That's an okay one. Yeah. Or what's another way to say it? There's a very clear way. If you, if you hear this in the audio, there's pro a very likely way that they would say that. Uh, that's right, Asanova Albina. It's in front of the entrance. Thank you, Asanova. Good. Yeah, it's directly in front. Yeah, so in front or opposite to, okay? So we can say in useful sentences, however, in diagram B, one beach bar is to the right of the entrance and the other is in front or opposite to. the entrance. All right, good. Excellent. So learn these words like opposite to, in front of, okay? They won't say above. Uh, adjacent to the entrance, Prashil, is different, okay? It's not, a, it's not quite adjacent to the entrance, but you're close, all right? Now, obviously, we have a couple more here. You can practice those at home, but you get the idea, all right? So uh, here you have the beach bar uh, directly to the right. You have the other one uh, to the top, and here you have the cafe to the right as well. Here the difference is the cafe's on the right, and the beach bars are directly to the left and the right. So just some slight differences as well there. All right, students, but you get the idea. So for diagrams at home, don't just start listening, but first do your own description. It's very useful in English. And the reason why IELTS is testing this is because if you live in Canada or if you go live in Australia and you need directions or you need to find where to go and you're asking people or you're telling people, it has to be clear, all right? You don't want people getting lost and confused, okay? So make sure that you practice those prepositions and directions, all right? Describe them, write them down, then listen and see how well it matches with what you wrote down, okay? So I'll bring our brightness back up here. You can see me a little bit more as well. And let's do this part two, all right? So we'll do this part two together now that you have a good idea of this uh, strategy, and then uh, we'll check our answers. Again, students, uh, while I play the audio for part two, please do not write 
in the chat the answers. Give everybody a fair chance. Just write it down on the piece of paper, okay? So we're going to jump back here to this uh, speaking part two. Or sorry, listen, speaking, listening <laughs> part two. And uh, I will play the audio for you. Again, if it's quiet on your side, uh, just uh, turn up your volume or use a headset, okay? Uh, I'm using my uh, mic here and uh, speaker to play. So uh, focus, and here we go with uh, test four, listening section two. Now turn to section two. Take some time to look at questions 11 to 16. Listening, section two. You will hear a woman showing a group of people around an all-inclusive resort hotel. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 16. Now, listen carefully to the interview and answer questions 11 to 16. I'd like to welcome all of you to the White Sands Five Star Resort here in beautiful Varadero, Cuba. Today, I'm going to show you the fine features you'll get to experience during your stay here at White Sands. Before we begin, does anyone have any questions? Hi there. Yes, I have a quick question. How long will the tour be? I have to meet the rest of my family for lunch in an hour. Not a problem, sir. The tour will take no more than 30 minutes. If after this time, anyone wants more details on any of the resort's features, I can help them out individually. Any other questions? No? Well, let's get started then. White Sands covers 10 acres of land, including direct access to over 250 metres of pristine Caribbean coastline. It is perfectly safe to swim in the waters here at White Sands, but do be on the lookout for jellyfish in the water. They are not deadly, but their sting does pack a punch. As we pass through the lobby, I want you to take note of the main bar area on your left. The bar is open from 11 in the morning each day and closes at 1 o'clock a.m. each night. As we proceed down the main path, you'll see four apartment buildings, marked A and B on your left, and C and D on your right. Between buildings C and D on your right is one of our finest restaurants featuring traditional Cuban cuisine. We have seven restaurants in all at White Sands, and we invite you to try your favourites while you are here. I have a question. Go ahead. In our brochure, I read that we are only entitled to five restaurant visits per week we stay at the resort. Is that right? Yes, that's right. The restaurants are only open for dinner, and reservations are mandatory. You will be able to make reservations at the end of this tour or any time before five this evening. When you are not dining at our a la carte restaurants, you may eat at either of our two buffet restaurants, which are open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Additionally, there is a night cafe, which is open until 4 a.m. Does the resort have a nightclub for dancing? Yes, of course. We have a discotheque located at the end of the main resort path, further away from the apartments. This is, of course, for noise reasons. In fact, the discotheque is conveniently located next to the night cafe. And what are the discotheque's hours? It opens at 8 in the evening and closes at 3 a.m. early the next morning. Last call for drinks is at 2.45. You now have some time to look at questions 17 to 20. Now listen to the rest of the interview and answer questions 17 to 20. Next, I'd like to take you down to the beach and show you some of the facilities and services we offer. As we approach the beach, you'll notice the brilliant white sand that our resort is named after. The sand is incredibly fine and is lovely to walk on in your bare feet. Now you can see to your left is one of our beach bar facilities. There is also another beach bar about 100 meters to your right. These bars serve beer and cocktails from noon until 4.30 in the afternoon. 
On your right is a small cafe serving snack food items during the same opening hours as the beach bar. And straight ahead of us is our beach changing facility, where you can change into your swimming costume, use the toilet or have a shower. Are there any water sports included in our holiday package? Good question. Yes, there are. You have unlimited access to our skin boards, surfboards and beach sports equipment, such as beach volleyball and football. Additionally, you may sign up for windsurfing at our activity desk, located adjacent to the resort lobby. Finally, you may also register for our weekly water polo tournament, which is held each Friday afternoon at half past two. Does anyone else have any... That is the end of section two. You will now have half a minute to check your answers. All right, students. So that is a classic uh, part two uh, for the IELTS listening and difficulty and question types. Uh, let's go through it together. Let's answer these. Let's see how you did. Okay. Let's go back to the beginning, starting with uh, number 11. All right. So number 11 is approximately how long will the tour be according to the guide? So number 11 is the tour quarter of an hour long? Is it an hour or is it about a half hour in length? Okay, so the first four students, first five students, I should say, all believe that it is half hour. Now, they don't say half hour, so the woman doesn't say half hour. She actually says it'll be about 30 minutes, but as we know, 30 minutes is the same as a half hour. So pay attention uh, to the uh, paraphrasing that's used uh, in, uh, in the listening. You should always catch that. The correct answer was C. So good for you, those students who got that. All right, let's keep going. Okay, in the next question, the order doesn't matter on the answer sheet. Uh, you just need the correct answers. So it's for four points. It's 12, 13, 14, and 15. So you have your answer sheet, and you have 12, 13, 14, and you have 15. And the order doesn't matter, but you need to get them correct. You get one right for each point. So what is... Uh, available at this resort. A, yeah, we hear that at the very end. There's a night cafe. So we hear that a couple times. That's great. Uh, what else is there? There's jellyfish, but they're not deadly. Uh, I can't remember about the Cuban restaurant. There's definitely four apartments. So she says our resort includes four apartments. Yes, definitely. Uh, I think seven or eight restaurants, so a number of restaurants definitely sounds good, right? A dozen acres of land. Uh, I remember something about land. Uh, I don't know if it was a dozen. And direct beach access. Well, it is a resort, so it should have direct beach access. Uh, several buffet restaurants is not correct because it said a couple. A couple is not several. It said two. So several is more than two. A couple is two. Uh, direct beach access looks like the best one for me. So I'm going to go with G on that one. Hopefully you got the same. Okay. A, D, E, G. Uh, one point for each. A little bit tricky. If you got two or three of the four, good job. All right. Uh, this was a bit more difficult. It's not um, coming at the same order necessarily as the audio. So you have to really pay attention and catch them one by one. All right. A little bit of a tougher question. Okay. Uh, let's go on to question number 16. What time is last call at the discotheque? Last call means... Uh, anybody know what last call means? Hopefully some of you do. Okay. Maria Faye Gonzalez says B, and you're right. Vishit says B. Yeah, Bs are good. All right. Uh, yeah, B. Uh, last call means last chance to buy drinks. Usually meaning last chance to buy alcoholic drinks.
Okay, that's the, that's the meaning of last call. And they'll actually say that in bars in English. So they'll say, it's last call, anybody for drinks? Uh, if you want to get a soda or an apple juice, they'll usually give that to you after last call, usually. Uh, but for alcoholic drinks, it's the last chance. Okay, they don't want people drinking after a certain time. Or there's a law that drinks, alcoholic drinks cannot be served after a certain time. All right, uh, let's keep going to our last few questions here. So what is the correct configuration? So it's pretty close to what we wrote, right, students? So the student says there's a beach bar directly to your left and another one about 100 meters to your right. So definitely the beach bars are to the left and right of the entrance. So it's either A or D, right? We know it's not... B, uh, C, and we know it's not B, uh, just because of the location of the beach bars. Now, the cafe, does anybody remember? Is it on the left or the right? Yeah, they say on the right, so it has to be D, okay? Good, so the correct answer there was D. We know that from left and right and right. So left, right, right, from the entrance, the, the uh, point of reference was the entrance on that one. So that's your point of reference. Uh, pay attention to that for diagram type questions. What's your point of reference, okay? This is your point of reference. All right, so pay attention to that. Okay, let's go on to our final few questions here. I was a little bit slow getting to this section, but you should have still gotten it for the most part if you have some good listening skills. So the beach bars serve beer and cocktails from noon until what time? Anybody get what time they stop serving cocktails and beers at the beach bar? Yeah, I believe uh, that it was uh, 4.30. Uh, in addition to the small cafe on the beach, we also offer a changing what? Okay, what else? Yeah, changing facility, very good. Yeah, not room, but changing facility. Very good. Okay. Um, and then uh, where you can change in and out of your swimming costume. By the way, in Canada, U.S., we say swimming suit. Uh, in Britain, they say swimming costume. We also offer plenty of sports at the resort, whether it is skimboarding, beach volleyball, football, windsurfing, or our once a week, what tournament? What kind of tournament do they have each week, one time? Hopefully you got that. She emphasizes that. Water polo, that's right. Okay, proper noun. So water polo, very good. So you're passing the ball. It's big, big, big sport here in Hungary where I'm at currently. Uh, water polo, so 430 facility suit. Well, you don't need that. That's not an answer, just some vocab. Uh, water polo, okay? So 430 facility water polo, just like that. Let's have a look at the answer sheet. Just make sure that uh, we're uh, on the same page as the examiners here for section one, section two. So good job, everybody, for hanging in there. Of course, we have this included. So here's the uh, answer sheet uh, for the two sections today. So listening section uh, one, B, B, Anderson with an E, 20th August, 620, BA in art history. You don't need the BA, but you need art history. Notice how the H is capital. Then you have BAC, and then B. And then here it is for section two, C. A, D, E, G, the order does not matter. B and D, 430, facility, water polo. Very good, students. Very good. How did you do in section two, students? What kind of numbers did you get? So let me know. How many did you get correct? 
What was your accuracy? For section two, ideally, you're still getting six, seven at least, okay? So you're getting at least six, seven correct in uh, section two because section three and four are just gonna get more difficult. So Abhishek says eight. Abhishek, it's very good, okay? Eight is, eight is a solid score for section two. You keep going like that, you'll get a nice high band score, okay? So eight is solid, definitely. Rekha, eight, yeah, it's good, it's solid, all right, good score. All right, students, uh, remember this listening, these strategies, they're coming from our websites, gieltshelp.com for general IELTS, aehelp.com for academic IELTS. Definitely visit our websites. Here I'm logged into my student account in the general IELTS, uh, and uh, when you arrive to the homepage, you should see this with the uh, big green background and you'll have that big red button there click it join it spend a couple dollars save yourself headache learn the right strategies and pass IELTS don't take IELTS three or four times no point to do that this is the academic IELTS website click that big red button hit it join it get the six practice exams get the interactive course get the hundred hours of video lessons uh, and uh, learn the right way, all right? Uh, that's it for me for today, for this week. Uh, next week, we will continue live IELTS classes on the 13th with speaking part three, and then we'll do uh, on the 14th uh, some listening strategy and practice. We'll finish this listening. So we'll do section three, section four on Thursday next week. So make sure to join and then you can get your total score for this listening and we can calculate your band score, okay? I hope everybody had a good time learning uh, this week and in today's class. If you have questions, adrian at gieltshelp.com. Again, materials are from gieltshelp.com and ahelp.com. Great job, students. Hang in there. Keep practicing. English beyond IELTS is extremely valuable in today's world. It will be... Uh, to your advantage to master it at a high level. So believe in yourself. We believe in you. Have a great rest of your day. Bye for now.